Good morning, everyone. For those of you who are new to my channel, I'm Brittany, and I started this channel during my early maternity leave as kind of a personal creative outlet as I worked through my prenatal depression and as a means of sharing some of the tools and strategies I found helpful with all of you. Hopefully through my videos, you pick up a few new ideas or strategies that you can integrate into your own life to help you work through any personal challenges and strive towards your goals. I'll start with a quick check-in on this week because it's actually been a hard one for me. I feel like my head has just been spinning with the seemingly endless number of things I need to do to prepare for a baby and a move simultaneously. And then I had my first panic attack in over a month a couple nights ago, which was very frustrating and disheartening and they always take me out of the game for a couple days. Literally yesterday, I didn't leave the condo once and I cried numerous times, but it's fine. I tried not to be too hard on myself because I know it always takes a couple of days for me to bounce back from a panic attack. And I was determined not to let this one crush the forward momentum I've been building as I've been working through this antenatal depression. As I said before, I know these things are still bound to happen and it's all about not being too hard on myself, giving myself time to recover, sticking to my daily self-care activities, like I talked about last week, picking myself back up when I feel ready and continuing to move forward. If you're dealing with a similar situation, please give yourself some extra self-love and don't feel bad if you have a million things to do, but you literally don't accomplish a single thing. It's fine, it'll all work out, or at least that's what I'm telling myself. So on that note, let's reset and start with our deep breath. On the count of three, one, two, three, in, and out. Now, one of the things that has helped me tremendously throughout this pregnancy is talking to family and friends who are going through or have recently gone through the same thing. Naturally, since this is my first pregnancy, I was completely overwhelmed with what I needed to learn, what was happening to my body, whether what I was feeling was normal, and so on. For the first half of my pregnancy, I kept most of those anxieties and worries to myself. But when I finally started getting professional help for the anxiety and depression that developed, I started opening up more to friends and family as well, who have been so amazing at checking in with me and sharing their experiences and struggles too. Going through any big change in your life can be an isolating time. So I can't emphasize enough how much I encourage you to reach out instead of close in, even though that can be our natural tendency. I wish I had been more open and interactive with others sooner. Even just talking with pregnant friends about their daily struggles, like goldfish brain as Victoria, who you're gonna see later puts it, really helped normalize what I was going through and helped me put my experiences into perspective. Basically, I no longer felt like I was living on an island or at least not most of the time. So today I have a shorter, fun, light video of quick fire pregnancy related questions with a few of my friends who are also pregnant right now to share some of our thoughts and experiences. And just a quick but important disclaimer, I realize that pregnancy is a tricky topic. And if hearing others talk about their pregnancy experiences is not gonna serve you today, then please skip this video. How many weeks pregnant are you as of your recordings? I'm currently 29 weeks pregnant. I'm currently 33 weeks pregnant in one day. My name is Laura and I am 15 weeks pregnant. As of today's recording, I'm exactly 33 weeks pregnant. What was your initial reaction when you found out you were pregnant? Uh, my first reaction when I found out I was pregnant, I guess, was uh, excitement, relief that it didn't take too long, and anxiety that now I had committed to this path. It is our second child, so now we're going to shortly have two under two. I would say disbelief. My husband had been telling me for a little while that he thought I might be pregnant, but I was like, no, I really don't think so. So then I was quite surprised when the test came back with such a clear positive. My first reaction to being pregnant was, whoops, this was a little bit earlier than expected. We were going to wait until after the vacation or on the vacation to get pregnant, but it happened before. So a little bit of a shocker, but still exciting. <laughs> Aside from your partner, who is the first person you told you were pregnant? I think I told my mom and my husband told his mom over the phone at the same time. 
the first person I told I was pregnant was my best friend, Steph. Um, more so calling her in a little bit of a panic because I was <laughs> pregnant way too early than expected and didn't think it was possible. But just a shocking, surprising call to my bestie. The first person I told I was pregnant was my best friend, Amanda. I bought one of those cheapo tests, which had the faintest line. And after I confirmed I was pregnant with the digital test, we kind of schemed how I should tell my husband. Yeah, the first person I told other than my husband was my mom, which in hindsight was a mistake because she spilt it to my sister who spilt it to my other sister. Oh well. Do you tend to crave sweet or salty or both? I usually have a pretty healthy balance of craving salty and savory things as well as sweet. But this pregnancy, I'm just like cookies, cupcakes, give me all the sugar in the world. I think I've eaten more cupcakes these past few months than, I don't know, I've eaten in my whole life, maybe. <laughs> Definitely sweet. I craved sweet through my first pregnancy and then postpartum and now again still interested in sweet foods when I previously was very salty. My cravings fluctuate wildly like from a cucumber sandwich to chocolate to sweet potato fries to bubble tea to macaroni and cheese to ice cream. It really never ends but I would say that the majority of my cravings are sweet. Unfortunately, I'm craving sweet far more than salty, which doesn't bode well when there's lots of chocolate snacks at work. What has been your favorite part of your pregnancy so far? My favorite part of a pregnancy has been feeling all her little kicks and seeing my belly move. Uh, my favorite part of pregnancy so far, I guess, is that I feel lucky that it's been so easy. I haven't had any morning sickness, so I've just been a bit tired, but like it's really not been bad, which is great because my first was a breeze all the way through. So I'm hoping for the same. I had to think about this question a little bit. Favorite part of my pregnancy so far. I was going to say that I don't really like being pregnant, but after thinking about it, I guess my favorite part is that I'm growing little a little human in me and, you know, my future daughter. So even though I really don't like this process, the fact that I'm growing my family member, my future daughter, that's the best part that I'm doing this and she'll be here soon. My favorite part has been feeling the baby's bigger movements, especially now that I'm in the third trimester and can actually feel like real body parts moving around in there. And I've also really enjoyed learning about what my body is doing each week and how the baby is developing each week with my husband. We actually watch a round of YouTube videos from the same YouTube channels each week for that relevant week. So I've learned so much and it's been really cool. What has been your least favorite part of your pregnancy so far? The least favorite part uh, I would say is that I can't drink, especially as things start to open up and people are going out more and summer is approaching. I would love to have a Caesar on a patio. My least favorite part of pregnancy was first trimester. I thought I was having a miscarriage. Fortunately, it was a subchorionic hematoma that went away. And I feel very blessed that this girl is still doing very well. Uh, this is probably not a surprise to any of you, but the least favorite part of my pregnancy has been the wild fluctuations and emotions that I've had a hard time controlling and that have contributed to my prenatal depression. The least favorite part of my pregnancy I think is that we have to go through so many changes and our body is just constantly doing weird things that the only explanation is hormones and on the other side our partners really don't go through anything except you know be there for us which is great but they don't they will never understand what we go through these changes are just I don't know unexplicable and it's hard <laughs> very hard. What's been the most surprising part of your pregnancy so far? How much I've been impacted emotionally? Most surprising part I would say is twofold. Uh, the first part is how hungry I am. I am so hungry in the morning I could eat just non-stop from 7 a.m. until 2 p.m. and then after that I don't need to eat at all. 
second part is how quickly I popped. I am only 15 weeks. This is how I looked at six months with my first. What's something new you've started doing since becoming pregnant or during your pregnancy? Something surprising that um, I've been doing this pregnancy is like moisturize like crazy. I was always big into lotions and whatnot, but I literally moisturize my entire body twice a day, if not more. And I'm hoping that this is something that I will keep going because my skin has never felt so nice. It's just really good, really good habit to just keep moisturized. <laughs> and if it wasn't for this baby, I probably wouldn't be doing that as often. Lathering my body with lotion on a pretty much daily basis. Actually, a lotion that I really recommend um, is this Clarins Body Partner Cream that was recommended to me by a friend and is apparently very good at preventing stretch marks. I've learned that in some cases, you there's nothing you can do to prevent stretch marks, um, but I figured it was worth a try. And this has been, this lotion's worked really well for me so far, and I haven't had any irritation or anything. I guess trying to carve out time for me because soon there will not be any time for me. And I found that to be hard with my first, um, that like your life is no longer yours. It gets sucked into your, your newborn. So while things are stable with my first, I'm trying to take time for myself. So when she's in daycare, I take a day off and I just do whatever I want. What's the thing you're most looking forward to doing or consuming after your delivery that you can't do or have now? Uh, I would say sushi. I'm not super strict about maintaining my diet now. I was definitely more strict with my first, but for this one, I think sushi is probably the only thing I'm not eating. Okay, so there's a few things that as soon as I'm not pregnant, I like cannot wait to have. One, sushi, like raw fish sushi. I want some butterfish <laughs> sashimi. Um... Uh, as a former brewer, I would love to have an actual beer and a glass of wine would be even nicer. Maybe some bubbly, who knows, but definitely sushi and bubbly would be great. This is a tough one, but running is probably the number one thing that I'm looking forward to because my body really has not tolerated running well at any stage of this pregnancy. Early on when I tried to run, I would just be so sore for days, which was not normal for me and was actually one of the signs that I thought something was going on early on before I knew I was pregnant. And then in the second trimester, I just did not have the mental or emotional capacity to really try um, getting out there and running much. And now my belly is just too big that I can imagine it would be very uncomfortable. So I'm very excited to get back to that. Also very excited to drink unlimited amounts of coffee. What's the first baby-related gift you received? This girl's first gift was this cute little lammy from her great-grandma Gigi. So thanks, Grandma Gigi. Um, I'm pretty sure the first baby-related gift we received was a package from my brother and sister-in-law that was meant to be a Christmas gift but ended up arriving two months early. Um, and it was a bunch of stuff off of our registry, which was amazing, including crib sheets, and my favorite part was this um, cute little shirt that says, hello world. And I think it's just so cute. The first baby related gift that we received, actually technically it was just for me, um, was from my mother-in-law and it was um, a pillow, one of those like long body pillows that are like a huge C shape. Um, I was having so much back pain, like right in the beginning of my pregnancy and sleeping with that pillow um, and having it in between your legs was like a lifesaver. So that was my first baby related gift and definitely one of the most appreciated as well. This is our second, so we haven't really gotten any gifts, but the first child, our <laughs> gift from my friend who doesn't have children was a 18 month old home is Toronto onesie. She's still not wearing it. What's the first baby-related purchase you made? Uh, this is a pretty random story, but in typical Brittany fashion, one day at work, I spilt my lunch on my shirt. So when I was walking from one work site to another, 
I stopped at a shopper's drug mart to try to get a cloth to wash off my shirt. And um, the only like forms of cloth they had were baby bibs. So I bought a pack of baby bibs, um, used it to clean myself off. And now I have them for our baby. My first baby related purchase for this baby has been a carrier because I plan on doing a lot of baby wearing round two. Who would you say is more prepared to be a parent, you or your partner? Yeah, I would say I'm more prepared because I've done it once, but going into the first, I would say we were equally unprepared. I'm going to say that my husband is more prepared because he's generally more level-headed than me, and he has more experience with kids, specifically with little boys, because of his two young nephews. How many hours of sleep are you getting each night on average? For the last month, I've been consistently getting about seven to eight hours of sleep a night, uh, which has been great. Like six, but I have another child already, so she wakes up sometimes. I would say in my first pregnancy, I easily was getting eight or nine till the end when you have to get up all the time. Um, in the beginning, when everything's still sitting in there. Do you have a nursery theme? And if so, what is it? And in terms of a nursery theme, we live in my parents' basement, so there is no nursery, just the basement. We're aiming for a space theme, although our nursery currently does not exist because we can't start setting it up until we move at the end of this month. Hope you all enjoyed this, and thank you so much to the girls who shared your videos. You're all going to be amazing moms. Lastly, I have one other bonus question for all the moms to bees or moms watching. Right now I'm sleeping with three pillows, one of which is this amazingly comfortable and large pregnancy pillow that my husband gave me for my birthday. Comment below or on this video's Instagram post for a chance to win the next self-care prize. I'll announce the winner at the beginning of the next video. Now it's time for our closing deep breath. Three, two, one, in. And out. Awesome. As always, thank you for tuning in. I can't wait to read your comments and I'll see you next week.